Okay, guys, we are live. How you doing, Rick? I am doing uh, great. It's a rainy day here in Croton on Hudson, New York. It's uh, it's brighter here than it is in Bangor, Maine, right? Oh yeah. How about you, Alec? How you doing? I'm doing uh, I'm doing well, but like Rick, I'm uh, I'm wet and um, starting about thinking about building an ark, actually. <laughs> Well, at least you've had some water. We, we are, it's raining here too, but uh, yeah, it's kind of welcome. It's cold, but it's, the rain is welcome because we had such a dry summer. All the lake levels were down, so it's kind of nice to mm. have a little bit of, of moisture in the air for sure. And um, so, Rick, we have a pretty cool show this week, right? Yeah, uh, actually, what you said uh, after our conversation last week about you know looking at the pictures, we, uh, Juan and I, we came up with this idea, tough love. <laughs> You know, so what we're going to do is uh, Juan has picked seven pictures that he loves and seven pictures that he feels need some tough love. And I've done the same. <laughs> and basically, uh, like, actually, if we could switch to my screen here. I'm yeah. Gonna, I, uh, we're not going to beat the people <laughs> over the head with a stick. I took this picture in Papua New Guinea. Uh, this is a daylight fill and flare shot, by the way. Um, we're not going to beat you over the head with our with our opinions. But uh, I think having some tough love is a good idea. Um, but you know, Ricky, there's such a thing as constructive criticism, right? Yep. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to just tell people bad news. Your image is terrible. You want to give right. them constructive criticism, how to make it better. That's what Absolutely. tough love is about. Absolutely. So tough love, you know, we could say it another way, you know, uh, a yes man will do you in every time. And this is really what you're saying, Juan, right? Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Oh, your pictures are great. You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, we don't learn anything great. when all we hear is, you know, your pictures are great when they may not be the best. Right. We don't learn anything and we don't improve ourselves. Right. Right. So as you can see in this slide, you know, our goal here when we do this, uh, uh, to do this uh, photo therapy live. We want to share pictures, some of our pictures and some of our members' pictures. We want to inspire all our members. And I know Juan, Alec, and myself, we get really inspired by the pictures, like this picture of Kevin Brown here on the left, which I think is one of the most creative pictures of Mount Rainier I've seen. You know, Juan, how many pictures have you seen of Reflection Lake? <laughs> Right. <laughs> How many have I taken of Reflection Lake? Uh, right, right. Same here. We did this on a workshop like a uh, hundred years ago. But I thought Kevin did a good job here, and Loria uh, Novak did a beautiful job. Uh, you've been down to Ushuaia, and so have I. And she got this mm -hmm. rainbow uh, when the plane was taken off. So I think that was really cool. So anyway, uh, we all get Juan, I, and Alec, uh, Linda, Jim Griggs, uh, uh, Phyllis, and Linda Marshall. We all get ex uh, inspired and excited. Uh, with the pictures that we see here, we get motivated. And this is really all about growing as photographers. As Juan was saying, you know, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> We're not going to grow if everyone says, oh, that's the best shot, you know, whatever. And we are sorry. We have Alec, how many members do we have now? Over? We're very, very creeping up and very close to 2,800. I know. Uh, we've this had a amazing. rush of members from Montana in recent yep. weeks. And, uh, a lot from a uh, lot from the UK because somebody has been uh, giving some presentations. Yeah, of late. Yeah. the presentation so I've growing. been giving is how to is how to get motivated and stay inspired. And uh, I'm uh, promoting the Facebook group page and people are, are really, uh, really loving it. Yeah, so I mean, I, was, I just came back from a Utah yeah. workshop and I have a few a bunch of those people also sign up to the yeah. uh, to the group as well. So. So how was it in Utah? We had a great time. If beautiful weather, you know, sunny every day, uh, cold in the mornings, but uh, and we went to some spectacular locations. We shot uh, stars almost every night in the Milky Way. Um, you know, we actually we ran these guys hard, and some of them were kind of flagging near the end of the trip. I was flagging near the end of the trip because I'm completely out of shape, being stuck at home <laughs> since March. You know, waking up in the morning was hard. Getting up, you know, staying up late, shooting shooting the Milky Way was was hard. But but it was fun. It was good to get out and do something. And, you know, I do have to give it to the folks in the group. Everybody behaved well. Everybody was great. Everybody wore their masks. Everybody kept the distance. Um, and because of that, you know, we had an incredibly good time. And how about traveling through the airports and stuff? You know, I, you know, I, when I traveled for the first time since March, that was back in the, September when I went to Colorado, I was all freaked out about going yeah, to the airports. Why not? But, 
you know, you realize that the airlines are doing the best that they can. The airports are half empty, or more than half empty. There's like a quarter, less than a quarter of the people there. So it's really easy to social distance. And everybody was on their, you know, the best behavior. I didn't see any crazy Karens out there. Sorry for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't see any crazy people doing any kind of nasty stuff. So, you know, the challenge is, is that a lot of the establishments at the airports are closed. So if you're counting on getting something to eat, yeah. You know, during your connections, it's kind of hard to do. But yeah. other than that, you know, it's actually not too bad. And I think that if you, you know, take all precautions, wear your mask, sanitize like crazy. I sanitize my seat. It was like like yeah. a car wash. I have to say, though, I think that <laughs> I think the planes are the cleanest they've ever been in their lives because oh, everybody was cleaning those it. things like crazy. I mean, I was scrubbing my seat. And the seat next to me and the wall and the window and the back seats in front of me, everything. That's cool. That's cool. So, so you well, carried on of, a bunch of hand sanitizer. Then. Well, I had a I had a big Ziploc <laughs> bag full, like with like I don't know, 30, 40 you know hand sanitizer <laughs> sheets in there. And do the people on the plane have the masks on all the time? Everybody, everybody has masks. That's great. You know, yeah. So yeah, you know, like I said, I think that people who are out there trying to do this are trying to do the right thing for the most part. Um, and my workshop participants, you know, I did this workshop with my friend David Swindler. Um, you know, everybody was great. We had an absolutely awesome time. So it was, it felt good to get out, even though I felt completely out of shape going out. <laughs> Well, get, get, getting back to the Karens, I saw I saw one today. It was a a mask maskless uh, Karen does this kung fu thing in like a supermarket. Our, our members can look it up. She goes crazy and she starts to start do this kung fu thing. These the Karen things are <laughs> they're so funny, but it's uh, it's serious. The people who don't take this mask thing seriously are are, are nuts, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, one hundred percent. Okay, so, so Rick, we have a new schedule. The, we have a new schedule right here, phototherapy live sessions. We're going to go to bi-monthly um, with the holidays coming up and all this other stuff. This is a new schedule. We're going to do it twice a month for November and December. It's going to be the 5th and the 19th. And we're going to post this on the phototherapy uh, Facebook group page. Uh, and in December, it's going to be the 3rd and the 17th at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. So, again, we'll remind you of this on the phototherapy Facebook group page. But uh, with everything coming up, it's just going crazy. One thing that we don't think is going to change, but it might change. And Alec, you may want to talk about this Meditation Mondays. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Linda and I right now, the plan is, is that we're going to continue to go as we've been going along. But if anything changes as the holiday season approaches, we're going to let uh, we'll let everybody know, of course, if there's a change in the schedule. Linda and I are also, if I can tease this, Rick, working on something yeah. very special for our members that we think we're going to launch in, um, if not late December, January. So we'll be talking more about that in the weeks to come. And, and one other thing, Rick, I know that you wanted to do today was announce that we have a new moderator that we uh, are yeah, Freddie in the Clark. process of bringing Freddie. up to speed. Right. Yeah, Freddie Clark is uh, is our new moderator. We welcome Freddie. He's been actively uh, accepting and declining people. Uh, you know, when people <laughs> want to be members, we just don't click. You know, accept or decline. We definitely look at at what they're posting and stuff like that. So Freddie's been active, and uh, he's going to be doing some live things too. He's a a wizard at uh, close up and macro and beverage photography. Uh, so he may have his own happy hour show. <laughs> Who knows? But getting back to your session, that sounds really interesting. So it's going to be. Um, just talk a little bit about that, uh, Alec. Well, so what Linda and I are playing around with uh, based on some work that we're doing now is putting together a program on mental fitness for photographers. So we leave it to people like you and Juan to um, tell us what the f-stop is that we should be <laughs> using which lenses to take on a on a safari where we should be focusing into the frame but what linda and i want to focus on are the mental fitness aspects is that how can we be focused and centered and all of the the inner voices from within that tell us that we're not good enough that we're going to miss the shot that we don't know what we're doing that really prevent us from being in the moment, enjoying where we are and taking the picture, you know, and then at the end of the day, when we have a great picture, those same voices telling us it's not good enough to share. 
with, mm. you know, with our friends and fellow photographers. So we're really going to take what we've been learning in this other study that we've been doing and apply it to improving photography. So we're going to be talking about more about that in the weeks and months to come. Well, that sounds like fantastic uh, phototherapy. So uh, please let us know. I, I totally look uh, look forward to that. I love Linda. Linda is amazing. I don't know if she's here today. And then another event, uh, you know, we'll schedule this, uh, Alex, so it's not at the same time as yours. Juan and I are doing a wildlife and nature seminar on December 6th. That's going to be a four-hour talk. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you're interested in this, you could email me at ricksalmonandmac.com or Juan at Juan at ponds.org. And that's going to be a ton of fun, a, a ton of learning. Oh, yeah. So I think with what you're doing, uh, Alec, uh, combined with what Juan and I are going to do, I think it's going to be fun. You're looking forward to this, Juan? I think it's going to be fun. I, I think this is going to be great. Really looking forward to it. I think that uh, this is something different that we're going to try and uh, a place where we're going to try to share as much of our <laughs> combined knowledge on wildlife and nature photography on this on this seminar so uh be on the lookout for that rick and i are putting the uh all the plans together to make this happen so it'll be lots of fun it'll be a ton of fun so i really look forward to that i always love seeing juan's work i mean look at the picture of this what kind of bird is it a gannet uh that is again northern gannet yeah that is a beautiful look at the gesture there that, that's what we're really talking about so anyway i'm going to go off camera now we're going to get to the slides but before we get to the member slides you know i was talking about this with juan before about cross learning everybody knows about cross training right you train in one area it helps you in another area well with cross learning cross photo learning i guess i should say what we learn in one area we can apply to another area so i'm sure some of our members have heard of a J w eugene smith um, uh, very famous uh, photography. I actually lived Juan and uh, Alec. You have driven by his house where he used to live. Here he lived in the stone houses here in Croton on Hudson, New York. Mm -hmm. Actually, cool. took this picture in his backyard. But what I like about this picture is the way the subject is framed. So if we think about framing, Susan and I went on a walk on the Hudson River uh, last week. So I was framing the scene. So this is what I'm talking about with cross learning. And, you know, today, maybe we can't go to a place like Antarctica, you know, because the ships aren't going and whatever. So, you know, the picture on the left talks about gesture. So the picture on the right taken in my backyard, it's about gesture. So what we learned in one area, again, we could apply to another area. Picture on the left, again, taken in Croton on Hudson, New York. Picture on the right taken in Papua New Guinea. So these are daylight fill-in flash shots. If you want to learn how to do these, just do a search on Google, Rick Salmon, daylight fill-in flash, and you'll see how I did it. Uh, but this adds a sense of motion to a picture. So here, I'm applying the technique in Croton on Hudson, New York. I'm applying it in Papua New Guinea. Uh, on the left, this is not too far. Juan, do we, we went up there, right? Oh, yeah, of course we did. Yes. We went, to, yeah, we did a video up there, and Alex been up there. So here, the, the idea is shooting through something to add a sense of depth, a sense of place to something. On the right, we have a picture that I took at the Sisters Meal Festival in China, and I'm shooting through the mother's arms as she's putting this silver headdress on her daughter there. So as we go through these pictures, my friends, uh, let's think about how we could apply, you know, what we learn in, in the pictures that we're looking at and how we could apply those techniques to our own pictures. Okay, so we're going to start with the pictures that I love, then the pictures that need some tough love, and then we're going to go to Juan's pictures <laughs> that he loves, and then down the right here, the tough love pictures. So I'm going to start off, and then Juan's going to comment on them. Uh, Jim Maca, Macanamy, I guess. He just posted this picture yesterday after I said, Juan, the shots that I picked. He says, hey, Rick, that wasn't in there. <laughs> well, it wasn't because this one popped out. And what I like about it, he called this fall colors. And these are fall mm -hmm. colors, but I love the composition. I love the, <clears throat> the line, the diagonal line going from the top left to the um, over to the right there. I like the shadows. I like that he has a good exposure here on the chrome. What do you think, Juan? Well, I mean, the detail is amazing. And I love the fact that, you know, he took this shot in at a bleak angle, right? A lot yeah. of folks would look at this and take this mm -hmm. trade on shot. There's so much here to see, but I think it makes it that much more interesting at that oblique angle because you have all these lines in the scene that guide your eye, not just the straight lines at the top, but that really seductive sensual line yeah. at the bottom is, is just so so smooth and beautiful that really guides your eye to the part that has the most interest in the scene. So 
nicely done. And you know, I and I said, like I said to you, I almost picked this image as one of my love images. So I'm glad that, uh, and I feel bad, guys. I had too many, so I had to whittle it down. So I'm glad that you picked. You changed one of your picks to this one. Yeah, I, yeah, it is. It is so hard to pick. We have so many good pictures. And by the way, uh, for our members who are uh, watching and listening, Alec is going to be reading comments if he sees uh, something here. Uh, so we definitely want you to uh, participate and add your comments. And this is recorded, so you could watch it later on. Ramesh, Ramesh is amazing. I would say every, I, I, you know, I tell people that my specialty is not specializing. But when it comes down to it, I love people photography. And uh, we, we've been talking, <laughs> I'm trying to talk him into doing a book. If any of our members want to do a book, they could uh, <laughs> always email me, Rick Salmon at me or Mac.com, and I'll give them some guidance if they'd like. Uh, but anyway, I think he could do a great book. But look at the, we talked about the gesture before. Look about the gest look at the gesture. Look at the the lighting. I mean, this is just such a powerful picture. Uh you got look look at this. You got 30 comments on it. I mean, you know, we've talked about this before, right? You know, people converting images to black and white. When you convert the images to black and white, you kind of like have to commit to really mm -hmm. making that a contrast to image. Add a lot of density to the scene, like, you know, we used to call in, in black and white. And, and he's done, done this here to, you know, in spades. And there's so much texture, so much to read into the scene. And at the same time, it's a little bit mysterious, right? Because you're yes. like wondering, what is he doing? He's looking off to the side. Is he getting some feedback from somebody? You, you, you know, in those images that do add a little bit of mystery to the scene tend to be, you know, much more interesting. It keeps us looking into the scene, right? Yes. Well, that's what Ansel Adams said. Pictures are lo often looked at, not looked into. And Juan, what you just said, I think people are looking into this and looking at, whoops, looking at the uh, comments over there on the right. You know, beautiful, almost almost a painting, but better, right? Well, what better compliment <laughs> could you want than that? Stunning, very impressive. So Juan, mm -hmm. Alec, and I, and the moderators, Freddie Clark, the new, uh, Phyllis, uh, Jim Griggs, we all go through these and we really are, like I said, we're really learning. We're really learning ourselves and reinforcing these uh, these techniques. So this, uh, by the way, these aren't in any uh, special order. Uh, they're just uh, in a random order. Right. And the reaction okay. live, Rick, is dramatic, mm -hmm. powerful, love the contrast. You know, so yeah. it's just people and I think really shooting, like it. I think shooting with that window behind, like he could have moved over this way to the left and had a black background. But I think this window and the texture, like Juan was saying on the wall here, is just really, really cool. So Ramesh, I, I definitely need to get to India and shoot with you when all this crazy stuff is uh, over. Okay, Juan, what do you think of this beautiful fall picture with these beautiful benches in here? And, uh, and it's almost like a, a vignette on the top here. Well, I'm a sucker for these type of images with the, with the nice leading lines and the beautiful full backgrounds. If you look actually at the home image of my phone, it's an image kind of like that at my my uh, my cabin by the lake. There's this road that goes in with all this foliage, all these leaves falling on the ground. So I'm kind of a sucker for them because you know we have a lot of stuff here that's pulling into our eye, but that road is guiding our eye to some of the best parts of the image where that color is, the benches that are there. You know, it would have been nice to have seen somebody walking in that scene as well. I think that would have also, that would improve the image, even though I'm not, as you know, someone that likes to have their you know, people in their images all that often. I think in this case, it would have, it would have added a little bit to it. Um, what do you think, Rick, about the cropping? What about the, what do you think about the edges? I, 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 I like it. Uh, you know, this white line is because is I took a screenshot, but right, I like the right. separation. I like the separation in the trees. Maybe a little more on this side. Hey, Alec or Juan, do you want to take a guess at how uh, to pronounce this name? Uh, we got Curtis as a last name. Kaja? Kaja, yeah, I think it's Kaja. Kaja Curtis. Hey, Juan, you could answer this. Uh, can someone, this is Tommy, a good friend, Tommy Armstrong, who's been posting some amazing uh, mirror uh -huh. images lately. Can someone tell me the difference between Lightroom and using camera raw filter in, uh, in Photoshop? So I use ca the camera raw filter in Photoshop. Um, but Juan, I know you're a big fan of Lightroom. Yeah, actually there is no difference. So they both use the exact <laughs> same engine. 
Um, you know, they, I guess the one difference is that you can apply the same controls that you have in Lightroom in Photoshop by using a filter as a layer onto mm -hmm. the scene. Whereas you can't add it as a layer when it's coming from Lightroom into Photoshop itself. Um, but the controls are the same. The engine is the same. So whatever you're doing in that camera raw filter in Photoshop, it's like if you were, had done that in, uh, in Lightroom. So it's yeah. the same controls. It's just that you're doing it in the context of Photoshop versus in the context of Lightroom. And here's why I use Photoshop more than Lightroom. Uh, because since I'm going to go to Photoshop anyway, I open my filters in Camera Raw, <laughs> then I just click open. And then, you know, I, I think the clone stamp tool, although I haven't tried the latest clone stamp tool in Lightroom, is it as oh, good it's as... terrible. Uh, no, it's yes. terrible. So if for no other reason, if for no, no other reason... <laughs> Learn Photoshop with the clone stamp tool. It's, uh, that, it's honestly really that, amazing. nowadays that's really the only reason I go into Photoshop is when mm -hmm. I need to do any any significant cloning or healing because mm -hmm. those tools in Lightroom are just not up to snuff. They're good for you know if you need to remove like a a, a telephone wire from the sky. Yeah, yeah, it works yeah. great for that. You know, but anything else really you know anything complicated with texture or whatnot, you definitely want to go into Photoshop, and that's the only reason I. I go into Photoshop now these days is is um, because now you know we can do stitching, we can do yeah. HDR, we can do combined HDR stitching in the Lightroom. Um, so everything that I need is there in Lightroom except for the cloning. That's the last. I part. know it's silly, right? Why? Yeah, well, I guess silly. I want you to use I both, know. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have, they have to justify the uh, the monthly fee. Okay, the next picture, Philip Reynolds. I would have picked this one for the uh, for the banner photo, but I couldn't figure out where to put, you know, the phototherapy in his name. Now, I don't know if this picture uh, shot at Jekyll Island, Driftwood Beach at sunrise. Mm. I don't know if it's focus stacking or what, but the depth of field is incredible. I feel I feel like I'm there. So maybe Philip uh, Reynolds can tell us, but I think it's a kind of like a haunting picture, haunting yet beautiful. And the detail, you know, he's shooting into the sun. You know, we talked about uh, processing before we came on, that he's shooting into the sun uh, and he has texture here. This, this, my guess is this took a while to, uh, to create. Yeah, no, that's absolutely stunning. You know, and I've heard of Jekyll Island many times. So I need to go there sometime because every time I've seen pictures of Jekyll Island, he's absolutely absolutely stunning and, and this image is is, is just beautiful it, it's great that he got um this in, in with the right light um mm -hmm. and i do wonder because you see that the sun is behind right we know that the mm -hmm. sun is is uh, setting um uh, or rising actually um right because yeah chances are that it's a, 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 a sunrise shot but we still have a lot of nice definition yeah. in the foreground so I do wonder if this was not just focus stack, but maybe it was also an HDR so that he, he could get mm. some of that light in that foreground of those of those branches and those trees. But, you know, I, again, another kind of creative shot, something I probably would not have seen or thought yeah. of to do, um, because in my initial impression is that I would be busy, but the busyness kind of works here and all the branches kind of fall in the right spots, right? So you don't have a lot of overlapping branches. Um, so you still yeah, get like a lot separation. of detail, both in the foreground and the background. Lots of separation. Nicely done. Yeah, he's at the right place. Like I was saying with uh, with this picture, we have the separation in the trees, mm -hmm. you know, as much as possible. And Alec, were you going to say something? Is he here? Oh, just the, the comments that are coming in. You know, Phyllis says it's a perfect Halloween shot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jell Wood yeah. It says it's fantastic. Steve Wilson, magical. You know, Dave Gurney, the framing. Mm -hmm. And Jim Griggs, our moderator friend, says uncluttered clutter. Yep. That's, that's good. That's a good way to put it. I yeah, think I that's like that. a very good, uh, I think, uh, Jim, that's, that's a, a very Griggism? good description. Is that a Griggism? Uh, Griggism. That's a Griggism. Oh, Griggism. There you go. <laughs> now we have Griggisms. Hey, Jim, <laughs> ex uncluttered clutter. That is cool. Okay, moving along, Henry Hernandez. I think this is just... Uh, when I saw this, I thought it was just beautiful. The way the clay has the mirror. You know, one of the composition rules is don't place a, place a horizon line in the center of the frame. Uh, but when it comes to reflections, I break that rule all the time. And the little bit of texture in the water here and, and the way he composes, I think it's just gorgeous. 
Yeah, and the reflection is really what does it and how it falls with those lines of the clouds as mm -hmm. well. You know how they kind of complement yeah. each other. You have those parallel lines of the clouds and the and the trees both in the reflection and in the sky. Uh, and you're really dramatic as well, which, you know, really works for this image. I think the one thing that I would do to maybe improve the image is add a little more luminosity to the trees. The trees, the color of the trees and the brightness of the trees seems a little muddled. I would just, you know, add a tiny bit. Don't overdo it. The tendency here <laughs> would be to overdo it. Um, but just add a little bit more, you know, more luminosity, more light into those colors on the on the trees, because I think the the image could stand it. And it's interesting because you look at the reflection, in a, to a certain extent, there's more light on the reflection of the trees yeah. than there is on the trees themselves. So something to think about, Henry. And these colors are gone now. My guess is because it. Oh, I bet. The, yeah. Uh, I mean, look at this. This is just. This is a. You know, look at the look at the comments here. Just beautiful. Here's another one. This one got. Uh, oh, I can't see the number of uh, the reach here, but I think it was over a thousand. I thought this was just uh, just beautiful. The, again, talk about the reflection. Talk about the composition. One again, l learning what we learned in, by looking at one picture, we could apply to another. We looked at this picture. We saw the line here. You know, at the bottom of the frame. Well, with this picture i like you know although it's a straight line it draws us into the uh into the scene uh you know, what I, I like this this might have been added i'm not sure susan knows how to how to add add right. that uh and i don't i don't know about the birds but who cares i mean it's a beautiful picture <laughs> yeah to me to, i think this is probably some sort of composite right because we clearly mm -hmm. have a long exposure uh, mm -hmm. You can you, it's evident by the sky and by the water, but yet we have the birds nice and mm -hmm. nice and sharp. So it's some sort of uh, you know composition between mm -hmm. a number of images. But regardless, it's an absolutely stunning, beautiful scene. One thing that I really like also is the juxtaposition between you know the harshness of that foreground of the and then the softness of the water and the sky. Those two things, you know, kind of play off each other and really make the image that much more, that much more interesting. Nicely done, beautifully done. I think you're right about the composite because look over here. This mm -hmm. is like uh, I think he put, uh, you know, this water with this with this part of the pier here, right? So that's like an it's a little thing. So, but we're not gonna we're going to get to the tough love in a little bit. I just think it's just so beautiful. And if anybody wants to know how to add the, well, you could do this in, uh, in, uh, in Luminar now you could add the rays. You could, to some extent, you could add it with, uh, the light render filter in Photoshop and Susan Salmon knows every app in the world that can do this. But I thought, I thought the tone and we talk about that, the mood and the feeling is the most important thing. And my last love one for today, Carter Murphy photography. Man, one. <laughs> I don't know if you saw any skies like this when you were out west, but <laughs> I thought that it was just so interesting that you know uh, Carter included the sky and this much foreground. Some people would have said, "Oh, I'm just going to do the sky," but it's cropped almost for perfect. Well, in Instagram today, we could do the horizontals and the verticals, but I like the square uh, format. Well, you know, it, I mean, with that kind of foreground, there's no way I would have cropped that out, right? I mean, that to mm -hmm. me, that's part of the scene. Um, you know, and this is in Anza Borrego, which is, you know, kind of a, a desert area in Southern Southern California. And it's actually a beautiful, stunning location. Um, you know, when we were out in Utah this past week, we had like absolutely no clouds in the sky. We had totally blue skies, which was wow. kind of a nice break <laughs> from what we have here in Maine. But uh but definitely not the optimal skies. And he, so, so Carter got super lucky with those beautiful clouds and then some yeah. nice sweet light on it. Plus he got a lot of definition on that foreground with a you know, nice soft light on it as well, which, which, you know, gives you a lot of that texture and perspective on that, on that foreground. So yeah, talk about great inspiration, capture. right? Great. Capture. I think it's great. So those are my love pictures. So now we're going to go to the tough love and we're going to start with this one. Chris Hansen, I think this is a, a beautiful picture, but you know Juan always says, you know, talks about the space <laughs> here. Now I've taken pictures like this. You know, I love the colors, I love the gesture, but what you could do when you get a situation like this, another reason to use Photoshop, 
you go to a uh, canvas size. And when you're using canvas size, what you could do is you could move this little uh, dot around and you could expand the canvas. If it's in the middle, you could expand it in all different directions. But here I just wanted to expand the canvas on the uh, on the right. So I moved the dot to the left and it shows you that it's moving this way. So I just uh, increased it by about an inch and I just took a guess. Then I was able to create this. It's a little, it looks a little soft here because I've taken it from the screenshot. But basically what I did is after I expanded it, I just copied, you know, I, using the marquee tool, I just copied this and I pasted it. And I did this two or three times because it was so small. And I did get some beak in there, but I was able to clone it out. Using the clone stamp tool, that's a lot better than the clone <laughs> stamp tool in Photoshop. And I was able to uh, do that. And so I think Juan might even like a little more room. And I was going to play around and add some room on the top and make like a cover photo out of it. But yeah, I think it was. it's a good shot. But again... Sometimes you just, the birds are moving around so fast, you can't get the shot. Yeah, you definitely want a little more room, you know, for, to you know, need a little room to that bird. Not just, you know, in the case you framed this image, but also, you know, you want to provide room for the animal um, to move uh, to move into this red-breasted nuthatch, which is one of my favorite, you know, backyard yeah. birds because they're so neat and, and uh, their behavior is so interesting. But, you know, Rick, the other thing you could have done, just like you did, but you could also then select that area that was empty and do mm -hmm. content-aware fill, right? And uh, Photoshop may have been able to fill that easy, easily as well. Yeah. You know, I tried that, and what happens, I was getting all these pieces. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but content yeah. aware Phil is definitely a good idea. Yeah. You know, I definitely, and we want to get to Juan's love and tough love, so I'm going to have to, I'm looking at the uh, watch here. So we're going to go through these, like, uh, a little quickly so Juan can uh, get to his. So Gregory Johnson, Gregory has been uh, was in Costa Rica with us uh, on our workshop. Uh, so Juan and I talk about using Border Patrol. So this is definitely has to come out. Uh, and maybe since these dead branches don't, you know, there's something about a dead tree, right? I think dead trees are cool, but dead branches, you know, like this or leafless branches, uh, I'm not sure if they add a lot. So I would have just looked for a little tighter composition and not do that. Yeah, I mean, to me, there's so much stuff in there that's kind of busy, right? That is yeah, that is drawing my attention away mm -hmm. from, you know, the part of the image that's most interesting to me, which is that, you know, the, the, the foliage on the other side of that, of that body of water. So mm -hmm. I would have taken out or, you know, or gotten tighter on the left and tighter down at the bottom and try to remove some of that clutter that's in, that's Absolutely. in the scene. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Greg Efner. A nice shot, uh, but I, I, you know, one and I were talking about the, this before, but I think the face is a little dark. Uh, so, you know, we could have used a dodge tool to do this. Uh, and I'm not sure, again, we don't know. There In Nick Color Effects, Nick Color Effects Pro, there's a, a blue, um, like gold, uh, gradual, graduated filter that you can move up and down that would simulate a sunrise or a sunset. So I don't know if Greg, if Greg is here, Alec, you can let us know. But it looks like it's just a little too dark. That might have been one reason or something else. And also these twigs around here don't add anything, in my opinion, and down here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that it's certainly, you know, our subject is the Anhinga, right? We need to yeah. be able to see that Anhinga. And, and, and Rick, what is the first rule of wildlife photography? You know, we focus yeah, on the eyes. Yeah, the eye... It's the eyes, yeah. The eyes. Well, you need to be able to see those eyes. And this image is hard to see that eye. And, and you know, what, to me, the eyes is one of the coolest parts of the Anhinga because they've got the yeah. beautiful color around the eye. So uh, we definitely want to be able to see that a little more. Um, you know, I know that sometimes it's difficult because you're kind of shooting up at, yeah. at your subject, like in this situation. But really, we need to be able to see that eye to make that connection with our subjects. Susan and I were down in South Florida at a wildlife uh, preserve, and we saw one of these guys swimming underwater. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, this mm -hmm. looks amazing, right? I oh, mean, yeah. these are incredible birds. Okay, moving along, uh, Jan X Exler took this shot. I think it's a beautiful pose, beautiful model, beautiful dress. But, you know, we talked about separation, and Juan was talking about the separation in one of the shots, you know, that we have separation here, and that we have separation to a degree here. But this, I think the subject is getting lost in the background. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I think that, um, you know, there's too much stuff going on in the background. You know, it would have been nice. This shot would have been a lot better if we were shooting with a wide aperture, right? So that, mm -hmm. you know, our dancer would be in focus and then that background would have gone completely out of focus mm -hmm. and provided a really rich color palette behind our dancer, made him stand out. Right now, we have such deep depth of field, the whole scene is compressed, so it looks very flat to me. Um, Absolute, so, absolutely. So, so keep keep that in mind. You know, how can you isolate that subject? Because you know, what are we shooting here? What's our main subject? What's our our actor, primary actor in the scene? You know, or the star of the scene. That's our dancer, not the trees in the background. Make those guys go completely out of focus. Make him nice and creamy and soft, and that will bring that dancer. Make him pop out of the scene like they're actually jumping out of your screen onto your desk. <laughs> right. So it was a good idea. It's definitely a good idea. But as Juan said, I would have blurred uh, the background also. Uh, Dave Gurney, uh, I have pictures of the of uh, herons. I think this is a great blue heron. Yeah. Uh, you know, Juan and Alec, you've been on on our pond here, and we have a heron there. So I have a lot of pictures, you know, similar to this. But I think that the shutter speed is just a little bit, maybe more than a little bit too slow. Uh, you know, down here the water's sharp. But this is, uh, to me, I think it just looks a little, a uh, little too, a uh, little too blurry. I mean, having having kind of blur in, in in wildlife images can be good because it can give you a sense of motion. Yeah. But again, going back to that first rule of wildlife photography, we need to be able to see that eye. We need to be able to see the head. We need that head to be nice and sharp. If we can get our, that head nice and sharp and the eye nice and sharp, we can have the wings kind of blurry to give you a sense of motion. We can have the rest of the body a little bit blurry. But we do need to have a definition of what we're looking at here. Um, you know, and again, also the other thing that's happening here that I think I would have tried to improve upon is how sharp that background is. You know, I know that we have some motion blur on that GBH and a great blue heron, but it almost feels like the great blue heron is almost out of focus and the focus is mm -hmm. on the background. Um, so we need to be able to see more into it. That capturing of the motion is a great idea and give, give you a sense of, you know, emotion and intention. But we need to be able to have a little bit more definition than this on our subject. And Eric agrees with you down here. He says, uh, unless you're a heron lover, you wouldn't know what this picture is even about. Right. Uh, so we everyone tries to be kind. You know, Susan Salmon says, if you have a choice of being right or kind, be kind. So we always want to be kind when we give like tough love. <laughs> but I think it brings up a good point. Always use a two thousandth of a second for birds at least. So thank you, Eric, for chiming in. And my last love shot is by my good friend, uh, Jay Gramman. Uh, Jay's a, a great guy, a, a really good photographer, a very nice, warm person. So, you know, I have to give him some tough love here, but I think Juan would agree that we talked about the separation, that this stick here in the ground, if Jay had just moved over a little bit this way, it wouldn't be overlapping this uh, barn here. I mean, the barns look really cool. And I'm not sure this... Uh, well, it's not a cell tower, but I'll call it. A, it might be a cell tower. I don't a know. Telephone pole uh, looks like a telephone pole of some yeah, kind. I, yeah, I wouldn't add. I wouldn't. Uh, you know, as one and I always say, if it doesn't add anything, take it out. So I think cropping this and moving over would have been uh, would have been a good idea. So let's so, go back. Okay, let's go back to that image real quick. I know Eric. we've got. I know we've got time pressure, but just go. Um, I just want to point out, Dave did suggest at some point you read the explanation on his image. He appreciates the feedback. So I wanted just to pass that on to you. Uh, what's what's the uh, what's the explanation? Swallow a fish. Oh, is swallowing a fish. Yeah, it looks it's like still a, a cool fish shot. in his mouth, yeah? Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm glad Dave's yeah. here. Dave is a relatively new member. And what we've done, believe it or not, this is the first uh, phototherapy live session where we haven't had a Sissy Fry Wilson picture in here. You know, and it's, <laughs> a, it's a good thing that you mentioned that because she just clocked in about two minutes ago. So I'm right. calling her out as Jim called her out for being a little, <laughs> being being late. So, And thank you so much, Alec, for uh, doing this. Juan, you wanted to say something. Yeah, so, you know, one comment that I want to say here to Jay is, you know, what is this image about, right? The image is about the farm and the barns. So I would get closer to those subjects. I would get, see how the, you have that post in the, in the middle there? I would be standing on just on the other side of that post. 
that's standing mm-hmm. there in the middle, that, that tree, dead tree or whatever that is. And then you, you focus in on the barns that are in front of you and on the farm itself. I think that you have, there's too much foreground here that doesn't really add anything to the scene. Uh, whereas you could have really focused in and hone in on your primary subjects, which is the barn. And all it would have taken is to walk a little bit. If you could, I don't know, maybe it's a private yeah, I was thinking. location. You couldn't get in, but I would have got walked in and gotten on the other side of that uh, big pole there in the middle. That way you don't have that in the middle anymore. And you can get a little up close to those, to those barns and really highlight them. And maybe I don't like seeing the top of this car here because this looks like a really old scene, but the top of the car make, and this make it new. Mm-hmm. So I would have taken that out. Okay, my friend Juan, here's Juan's shots that I really loved from uh, from our Facebook group page. Yeah, and again, none of, these are not in any particular order. You know, I tried to kind of make them random. They may actually be more in a chronological order as they were posted than anything else. But uh, Gary, I absolutely love this. This is a typical scene um, in Nova Scotia of the tiny little fishing villages that you can find by just driving around. And, you know, the scene is just absolutely epic with amazing, beautiful, soft colors on that uh, sunrise. Um, with an interesting scene, you have these beautiful boats in the foreground, a, kind of an interesting looking shack or house, fishing fishing location in this tiny little kind of inlet or bay with just beautiful colors and beautiful um, textures and detail in the scene. So, you know, very nicely done. It, the reflection is absolutely gorgeous as well. I love the way the it balances, the shack balances mm-hmm. the, with the boats. And a great exposure. And, and, you know, and the other thing that, that worked for that image, too, we have a lot of water in the foreground, but the fact that we have a soft reflection of the sky mm-hmm. and of the building just fills in that little space and yeah. keeps it interesting. Yeah, it looks really, really, really nice composition, Gary. Gary's been on the show before with his uh, pictures. Oh, he had a lot of images. I mean, I, I kept looking at his images as I was going through the feed, and I just didn't want this to be the Gary show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you Sorry, know, I, 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 feel, I, no, I feel like that sometimes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is, you know, it's so funny because uh, this is from Mount Rainier, and I have very similar images like this from Mount Rainier and uh, from Glacier National Park and from the Tetons, and, and I love these kinds of shots. And not a lot of people like, oh, I have these images from Alaska as well, where you have all these low-lying clouds and you have the foliage, especially those pines or those evergreens, kind of poking out through the clouds and kind of revealing themselves a little bit, adding some mystery to the scene and i love the composition i love the fact that we added a lot of you know um, uh, negative space you know and i don't mean that in a negative way yeah, yeah. but in the, you know positive negative space at the bottom and at the top to give you a sense of place and give you a, a sense of you know possibly give you a sense of height right it looks like this place is very high up on a on a mountain and that's what they're giving you that space at the bottom does to you so very nicely done i absolutely love these kinds of shots and i think they're just mysterious and interesting at the same time i echo gretchen's comment Ooh, very nice i think kevin was he on the workshop with us uh one when we did the mount rainier kevin brown oh is that the same kevin brown they may yes. be yes that's the same kevin kevin brown yeah 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 that's absolutely right maybe it is the same kevin brown hopefully it is oh it is it is i talked to him okay very another cool. hey another philip reynolds shot yeah another <laughs> philip reynolds shots and the ura colorado for the beautiful fall color again another one of these shots like i said that i'm a sucker for with those leading line of the road he's got a car in there that's you know red color so it really stands out and gives you a sense of place and a sense of action plus look at those skies yeah. oh my god those skies are just just gorgeous beautiful um stormy skies with a tinge of color to them you know of 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 a sunset or sunrise probably a sunset plus you know the 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 mountains and the beautiful um uh aspens in yellow that you find so much in 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 that area of the country Uh, you know beautifully composed i mean there's there's you know this is an image that i would print and hang on my wall absolutely gorgeous beautiful same here now i wonder if he had a friend or uh, you know, drive the car through here with the lights on. Because Susan yeah. and I have done this. Uh, 
in uh, on Route 66, we did this. Uh, I think Alec maybe had tried this also, but I think the, the car is perfectly placed. I think it adds a sense of sen uh, scale to the picture, yep. and the composition. I mean, it's it's like you say, what a perfect shot. I'd love to hang on, hang on my wall. Another shot that's you know, um, you know, I, initially when I first saw this, I thought this was in Glacier because it's an area like Bauman and Glacier it looks very similar to this. Uh, but this is an Olympic National Park, which I was at last summer, not this past summer, but the summer before that on family vacation for the first time. And yeah, I love the, his title, Season Over, because that looks like, you know, everybody's out of the yeah. lake, you know, all the boats are out, everybody's going home. Yet, you know, you still have this beautiful scene with these, you know, mysterious, stormy skies, plus a beautiful reflection. The only thing that kind of, you know, is a negative for me is all the different the buoys that are out there. But, you know, being a boater, I'm, you know, I know what those buoys are. I know they're crucial. We need to have them out there. But I would maybe clone them out to try to get them out and make the scene that much, that much prettier. The dock I would leave because I think it adds a sense of place and gives you a little bit of an idea of what you're looking at and what this place is all about. But I would try to remove those buoys because they're a little bit unsightly. But I, I love, I love that. There's the layering that we're seeing in the mountains in the background with that, with those skies and those clouds. Beautiful, beautiful you know, shot. Well, well, one, you talked about a sense of mystery before. Look what Dave says here. Wonderful shot. It has some special attraction that I can't quite, you know, pick out. <laughs> so it has, right? It has, yeah. it has like a, a sense of mystery. And there was another comment that I liked. Uh, well, what, what we were talking about before, he doesn't right. usually like uh, Andy. Ogden doesn't like the uh, horizon line place in the middle, but it definitely works uh, Works, yeah, I mean, yeah. it works on this image. When your image is strong enough, you know, all, yeah. you know, the rules are there to be broken. And if you have an image that's strong, um, you know, those rules kind of go by the wayside. And our friend Linda Cullivan liked it too. Another another scene that, um, you know, that, that I loved, it just gives you a sense of place. It felt like, I feel like I'm in the middle of Montana um, when I look at this image. Mm -hmm. I don't know where this image was taken but to me this is like quintessential montana with big open skies and you know a, a guy in a horse or it could be a woman on a horse with a nice cowboy hat and just incredible detail layers um, on that mid mid ground i probably would have added a little bit more um contrast and depth if you will, to the sky, to those clouds, to make it not so gray, but maybe a little bit more contrasty. Um, but even the way it is, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. I love, you know, the way the clouds are coming in and the cropping with the way the clouds are forming. You know, it, it's perfect. The, the cropping is absolutely perfect. There's a little bit of dark space in the foreground that uh, may feel a little bit like too much, but I think it goes well with the silhouette of of our horse. Of a of a uh, the person on the horse as well the cowboy, um, you know. Plus, you get a little bit of sense of wind as well. You see that tail of the horse, how it's coming out to the side. Yeah, you can you know, feel like there's some wind blowing blowing through the scene. So there's a little sense of, you know, um, uh, of motion and making the image that much more dynamic. I also like the mist here, but I agree with you, Juan, uh, about the gray sky. That's the first thing I noticed when I was going to pick this picture uh, and give it some tough love <laughs> because I thought that sky would look a lot more dramatic. And I think if, you know, this is another reason why I use, uh, uh, well, I know you could do it in Lightroom too, but the first thing I do is I check the levels. And I think if Chris goes back, I don't know if he's here, Alec, or not, but uh, just I adjust the levels so the whites are whites and the blacks are blacks. Yeah, I yeah think, so Pamela uh, the Camp you know, commented, I guess she was with with chris when he took this image and this was in idaho so right idaho. next to montana um right. and uh, i guess she was with him so she she knows all about this shot beautiful beautifully done yeah you know and i've actually been to this lighthouse in uh, north carolina in corolla in north carolina so um and this is one of these lighthouses that a lot of people love to shoot because of the amazing spiral staircase coming up and down in the light you know that um that uh, that comes in uh, you know when i lived in north carolina uh, i i belonged to a number of camera clubs and after a number of years i was invited to do a lot of critiques and judging of competitions so i've seen 
hundreds of images of mm. of these staircases, and it, it, every one of them still captivates me. Um, I love the detail. I love the feeling. I love the light, how it's coming in, and I love the angle. There's, I've seen pictures of the lighthouse from the bottom, from the top, you know, from the middle, from the side, from all sorts of angles, um, and all of them are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. The challenge is, as David here ran into, is that window on the upper yeah. part of the scene. Um, I would clone out that tiny bit of the window up there. You don't have a nice light coming in through the window, so we get that hint that there's a window there. But that little bright spot on the upper part of the edge of the frame is distracting. My eye keeps wanting to go there. So I would clone it out and, uh, and, and take it out completely and replace it with some, some of the brickwork. I like the fact that the, there's really good depth of field. You know, with the, uh, with the ballerina picture up here, you know, good depth of field didn't work, but here depth of field, mm -hmm. really good depth of field worked, you know, it looks sharp down here. So this is really important to think about the, you know, what shutter speed you're using, as we saw up here, and what aperture and what aperture we're using. And Juan, I'm really glad you picked this one. Kurt did an amazing job. Here. Yeah, this is again, you're going back to that black and white. I picked so many black and whites for this, mm. uh, four of them or for, for this session. Um, and again, you know, he embrace the black and white he really brought in a lot of deep darks and really bright whites to really make this image sing again love all that all those layers in the scene the way that the light the, the river the light is hitting that river and the way that river glows it's almost like molten silver coming down mm -hmm. between those mountains and the, the beautifully uh, backlit clouds also uh, make the scene Nicely done. My eye just keeps wandering around looking at the different elements um, in the image. Again, when you convert into black and white, make that full commitment and just go for it and really add a lot of uh, of, of deep, dark reds, or deep, dark colors or deep, dark shadows into the scene. You don't want to make them completely black. You want that still a little bit of detail there, but you want to make those blacks dense for sure. So hey, we have... You know what's uh, interesting? Go ahead. A couple couple questions on on that on that one the comments are simply wow but uh we did have a question as to whether or not you might cut out some of the image on the left well the the thing is we're seeing a lot of black on the left but that's that is uh, facebook the image of the the left part of the image rick do you want to run your mouse is right there so no i wouldn't cut anything out i think it's you know nicely yeah. nicely you know, cropped. Um, well, I think the person who might be asking that, you know, uh, uh, who is it? It wasn't Art Wolf. Someone said that you could, there's like five pictures within a, a picture, right? So yeah. this could be a picture. This could be a nice picture up here. But <laughs> I think what's interesting, you know, I'm looking at the comments here, and people usually write at least a few words. This one, this one was perfect. Love it. <laughs> Awesome, yeah. wonderful, <laughs> so polite, right? Studied. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I mean, the comments well, what else now are wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Yeah. Someone you know very well, Rick, said wow. I yeah. think you'll be having dinner with her later. So it's <laughs> just that. Oh, Susan said that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Get ready. Here comes Well, Ron's you know, like I, like I said, you know, I like to give constructive criticism. And, you yeah. know, what's amazing about these images is that they're all great images. Um, yeah. They just need a little bit of work, a little bit of tweaking to them. Yep. So let's get started, Rick. And you know what? Actually, uh, uh, Alec, oh, let's ask our, our audience if they like the tough love. You know, usually we, we have a theme. So we're going to probably go back to a theme for the next show. But uh, I'm really liking the tough love. And uh, they do. And I, there have been several and, comments where people have liked this uh, this session tonight for that reason. Okay. They're learning. Okay, so, yeah, look Juan, at this image. You know, you know, it, it, I, at first I got to give it this kind of I'm primarily a wildlife photographer. So I'm going to be harder on wildlife images and <laughs> any other kind of image. That's a risk that you take. But you know, very nicely done. I love the I love the action in the scene. This is a zoo shot, which is you know hard to get because oftentimes you have all, all sorts of distracting elements in the foreground. So I I'm not so much I don't have a problem with the image itself. I think it's a great image. We got good uh, view into the eyes. We can connect with our subjects. There's great action in here. But my my issue with the image is that it feels overly processed. The colors don't seem right. 
the image is overly sharpened. Um, you know, so I would like to see it kind of in a more natural kind of setting, if you will, or natural look to it. Uh, and so oftentimes it's really hard when you're working on an image, you know, your eye gets used to what you're seeing and you may, you know, process an image to the point where you're not recognizing that you've gone a little too far. So oftentimes when I'm working on images, one of the tricks, and you guys may have heard this before, I step away from the image um, for for a half a minute, 30 seconds, something like that. If I have a window near me, I go out, look out the window, and then come back and quickly glance at my image. And that first impression that I get oftentimes tells me what may be you know, what I may have done wrong with the image, whether there's a color cast or may have gone a little too much with the processing to make it look, you know, maybe like an illustration versus a photograph. You know, I agree. And while you were speaking, I just took a screenshot and did something very quickly here. So I just made it a little darker. Yeah, look at that. Little, yeah. Because it looked a little flat. This looks right. a little flat, right? So what right. I did is I increased the uh, contrast was it before? I'm not saying it's better. It's just different. <laughs> right. And then I made it a little darker. So I think this is, you know, Juan, you're the wildlife photography. Does the fur look like this or like this? Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah. this fur to me looks a lot more natural. And I think it's not just the color. I think that whatever manipulation you did or maybe the act of of taking a screenshot and then editing it, soften the image a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, just because yeah. you can sharpen something, it doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> right. that you should. Right, that you should go that far in the sharpening. Okay, we have we're kind of running out of time, so let's move. Your quick, absolutely beautiful, beautiful image. Uh, I mean, you look at this image, you say, why is this in a tough love category? Because it is absolutely gorgeous image, and it is. However, you know, I would give a little bit more room. You see how that bottom foliage is right at the base of that waterfall, and all it would have taken is to move your camera up you know, a foot or two to give a little bit more space between the bottom of the fall and that foliage that's there and give me more view into that water and into the bottom of that waterfall. Other than that, I think the image is, is beautiful. It's great. You have nice colors, nicely framed. We have all this framing going on, but, you know, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on, you know, um, objects, you know, colliding with other objects and how you want to keep that separation between your subjects. Okay, beautiful action. I mean, geez, look at this. This is a roseated spoonbill coming in for landing. Um, just incredible, incredible feathers, uh, primary feathers as they come out in those, in those uh, little waves and angles. But guess what? We violated the first rule of, photo of wildlife photography and is having a connection with our subjects, being able to see that eye. So I would look to some of the other frames to see if you have another frame where you can actually see the face of our uh, of our subject. Um, other than that, I mean, this is an absolutely gorgeous image, you know, really nicely, excuse me, very nicely captured, beautiful color coming in through those wings. But if we cannot see the face, we cannot connect with that eye, we can't connect with our subjects. Agree. <clears throat> another gorgeous image, very, very nice. Um, you know, and again, as you can see, you know, I, these images are there's there are great images, but they do have things that can be improved. Here, one of you know, there are two things that are I find a little bothersome. The first is, in my biggest issue, is how bright that background is. The background is so bright that it's drawing me away from looking at my subject. You have a beautiful uh, red tail hawk here, which you have, it looks like a red tail hawk, in which you're looking at directly into those eyes. Yet my eye gets getting pulled away to the upper right hand corner because of that foliage in the background that's so bright. Um, so I would tone down that background, you know, maybe uh, bring in a little bit of more light into my subject to make it brighter, bring in some light into those eyes so that allows the viewer to connect with, with the subject. Now, the other issue that we have here is that we're getting that tail cut off. And you may not have been able to do anything about that if this was kind of a lucky shot, very quick shot. Um, but if you had been able to move maybe a step or two to the left, we would have been able to see more of that tail and have a complete look at our subject. But by far, I think the biggest issue that I have is that background. Tone down the background a little bit so that we can get more direct view into our subject. You tone down or crop it out, you know, yeah. one or the other. 
But uh, I, I agree with you, Juan. But it, sometimes these guys are not that easy to photograph. Oh, absolutely not. Yes, no question. And, but, but and look Dave at that, uh, look just at that commented he, he appreciates the feedback on that one. Good. Cool. Cool. Good. cool. We're here. Good. Hey, Juan, maybe we can, <laughs> maybe we can, maybe we could have the members uh, give uh, give our pictures love and tough love. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> Another oh, gorgeous Grady. shot. <laughs> I'm glad he's here. Yeah, another gorgeous shot. Beautifully, beautifully done. Beautiful foreground, which is not easy oftentimes to get a really nice foreground with the Milky Way straight lined up. You have to plan for that in most cases or get extremely lucky. However, the, my biggest flaw or my biggest issue with this image, if you look closely, is that your shutter speed was too long and those stars are starting to streak. Um, so you got to make sure that you pay attention to the MPF rule or the 500 rule to make sure that you don't do an exposure that's longer than you need to for that specific lens. So in the, what those rules mean, the 500 rule is a, a, an older rule, but the rule that we're following now is called the MPF rule, um, which is particularly uh, critical for cameras with lots of megapixels to them. And what it, what the, while you're following the rule, it will tell you how long of an exposure or what the maximum exposure can be before you start getting streaks on those stars. So um, so make sure that you look that up and you follow it because obviously you're, you, 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 you like doing this kind of work and you're doing an incredible job with it. So just to improve it that little bit more, make sure that you understand the MPF rule and that you apply it for your astrophotography. I think I could be wrong. I think he teaches uh, with Chris Smith for Out of Chicago or one of okay. those events. I think I met him somewhere. Uh, yeah, I agree. I might have taken a little off the bottom, but okay, look at these. Stun Go ahead. Yeah, Maroon Bells. I was just there for the first time when I was in Colorado about a month ago. Absolutely stunning location. The water was low when I was there, so I didn't get as beautiful reflections as you did here, Jim. Um so again, you know, we look at this image, we're like, wow, what a beautiful, stunning image. And it is, but it feels a little bit over-processed to me. The colors are just a little bit over the top. I would try to tone them down a little bit. And again, this is easy to do. I mean, I do it, you know, oftentimes, but I will step back a little bit and, uh, you know, re-look at the image to make sure that I'm not going over the top. To me, the colors are just a little bit too, you know, out of this world, a little bit too bright. But other than that, it is an absolutely gorgeous image in a beautiful location, super easy to get. Except nowadays with COVID, you need reservations to get there. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Yeah, I like this shot, too. Uh, I think the composition is just beautiful. And, I, you know, if we go through, look at all the reflection shots we have, right? We, yes. It's, it's pretty funny, right? Uh, yeah. That, that's pretty funny. Okay, and your last, Tough Love. So yeah. yeah, I've been at this place, beautiful place in uh, in um, West Virginia, and it's absolutely gorgeous place. But there's something going on here that I'm not quite sure what's going on. My guess is that this is the result of multiple exposures to get that water kind of silky. You see all those banding, that banding that's happening in the water. Mm -hmm. It's distracting to me. Also, the other thing I would have done, having been at this location. You know, see how that mill in the background, which is a huge part of this scene, is half obscured. I would want to be able to see that a little better, which means you need to be a little bit more to the right and, you know, possibly a little bit higher elevation so you can see more of that particular scene. But by far, I think my biggest issue is with the way that that water looks. You see how it has those little steps to it. You know, my guess is that this was the result of multiple exposures being stacked on top of each other to achieve that effect. So make sure that you have, you carry with you a neutral density filter so you can shoot these long exposures even when you have full full uh, daylight. That's the first thing I noticed there too. And uh, just one thing before we stop the slideshow, that we always want to use Border Patrol. This, I would, right? This mm -hmm. is like a, it's a little distracting, just like Juan said in the uh, staircase picture. Where's the staircase picture? This is a little distracting. So I've stopped screen sharing one. Is that correct? Yeah, sure. That, that works. So Alec, what's the basic uh, consensus of the, uh, of the group? Thumbs up. They really enjoyed, uh, they really enjoyed this. Uh, the constant theme is that, 
you should do more of it. They loved it and they learned a lot. And Rick, there's an invitation here from a, an old friend of yours, Marty Snyderman. I particularly like this session. And if you ever choose one of my images, feel free to have your way with it. And don't worry about hurting my feelings. Well, Marty posted a picture of, uh, if I could find it, uh, okay, let's see, one, uh, can you guys stick around for another two minutes? Sure, yes. Okay, let me see if I could uh, if I could find this picture because it was pretty funny what uh, I saw him today on. Uh... Alec, while I'm looking, can you say something about the members? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, actually, one of the things I, that I want to say is that, um, uh, uh, you know, if you guys like this sort of tough love sessions, we could in the future do sessions that are really just tough love. You know, some of the ones that we've been doing with set with uh, with themes have been really more about the theme and talking about what works for the particular image. But we could take, you know, some theme kind of sessions where we spend more time doing, um, you know, kind of tough love and giving you kind of advice. As you saw, you know, the images that I showed and a lot of the images that Rick saw, saw were really beautiful images. They just yeah. need a little bit of help, a little bit of tweaking to make them, you know, get over that little hump, if you will. Okay. Can you see my screen? Um, not yet. Hold on. Yes, we can see it now. Okay, so hold Marty on, posted on. this picture today of these lions mating in in, uh, in the Serengeti. Uh -huh. So, so I was teasing him. This is like straight on, and I, and I took this shot. Uh, you know, it looks like I was like to the right. So you know, and I said, "Hey, Marty, I was in the other vehicle. You know, to the right of you." But uh, I thought it was kind of funny. This is a very common scene, by the way, if you go to uh, go to Africa. So anyway, Marty, I guess thank angle you is so everything, right? Yeah. Angle is everything. So let me uh, close this. Stop screen sharing. Okay, guys, we've gone sharing? a little bit over. It's uh, six oh yeah. six, but uh, hopefully you guys found this useful. From the comments, it looks like you guys did like it. So maybe Rick, we should do another session that's really all about tough love. Yeah, maybe maybe that should be the next love. session. Is it? Yeah, instead of a theme, the theme will be, you know, tough love. You know, send us your images that you want us to give you, you know, kind of more blunt feedback on. Alex, well, there you go. We'll set up that topic as soon as we wrap it up. We've not added a topic in a month, so I got to sharpen <laughs> my right. skills. But we'll get that. We'll get that added. To so those love. of you who don't know, Alec is the vice president group supervisor of uh, membership <laughs> at this uh, great organization. So thank you, Alec. And thank you, Juan, for making all this magic happen with the different screens, the screen sharing, and everything. And thank all our members. This is a, a ton of fun for us. So yeah, folks, remember, we're, we're cha we've changed our schedule. We're not doing it every week. We're doing it every other week for November and December. So our next session is going to be, when is it, Rick? Uh, September, November... It's uh, twelfth, November twelfth. Yeah, I have to look. I have yeah. to look at my calendar real quick. November twelfth. Okay, folks, take care, hey. and we'll see you in two weeks. And vote. Vote. And vote. Yes.